In this video, let's talk about how to build out revenue for an oil and gas company. If you think about our typical template, we might just look at sales from the historical income statement and use some kind of a, a sales growth year over year percent to forecast that sales going forward. But if you remember the work on our dashboards, another way to, to approach that would be to say, if these were our sales, and we know that historically we've produced a thousand widgets each year then we could back calculate what the price per widget has been and then if we know what our sales are going to be I'm sorry if we know what our production is going to be going forward and we want to estimate a price of widgets going forward then we could estimate our sales going forward in that manner and if you think about it, if you're running a business, that's a lot better way for you to have a good idea of what you're going to be selling uh, than to just come up with some year over year percent. So we want to apply that same logic to an oil and gas company and say, if we know historically what our revenue has been and we know historically what our daily production has been in terms of oil, gas and gas, natural gas liquids and we know what the marker prices have been. These are the prices for oil at uh, Cushing, uh, West Texas Intermediate Oil, and gas at Henry Hub in Louisiana. And I've pulled these historical prices and will continue to provide them for you from these EIA websites that pop up when I hover over those cells. You can check those out on your own. If you want to copy that, hit Shift F2, and then you can go in and, and copy that. But for the rest of this semester, I will tell you what history has been. Because the reality is, and by the way, these numbers are continental resources. The re reality is if Continental generates this much production and sells it, they may not get exactly this price for their oil and gas. It may be further away from the refinery or the point of use. It may be higher or lower quality. And so that quality and transportation charge is going to come into the price that they get as well. So we can't just say production times price equals revenue. Let's try it and see how close we get though. While we're at it though, I want to calculate our energy equivalent barrels. You'll hear that called BOE or MBOE for thousands. And that's just oil plus gas divided by six plus NGLs, as you should know. I'm going to copy that across all the way because we'll be using that. And then since these companies, I'm going to show you at the end of this video how they report, uh, they, they typically show you the numbers in daily production. You know, we think about bringing on a good well at 2,000 barrels a day or something. We typically don't talk about a well producing so many barrels per year, but obviously that's how your annual revenue is calculated. Remember, not all these models are annual. Some might be quarterly or otherwise. So that's another reason that companies talk in daily production. But to get to annual, you just take however much you were going to produce times 365 days in a year. That would give us a lot of zeros. So let's divide it by a thousand and convert our units. I'm going to copy and paste that as a formula. And this formula actually will copy down as well. Because again, we're just taking oil plus gas over six plus NGLs. One of the reasons I chose this example was Continental Resources didn't report any NGLs and it makes it a little bit simpler for you to look at. Uh, so if they produced this much annually and they received this price, uh, then they should have received the oil times the oil price plus the gas times the gas price plus the NGLs. And we're going to use the oil price for that. NGLs don't sell for as much as oil, but that's all going to come out in this percent. And so ideally we would have gotten 3.2 billion for those sales, but due to quality location, and I'll go ahead and say uh, perhaps some of that sold as NGLs, even though they didn't, they didn't report it as such, they actually received 2.98 billion instead of 3.25 billion. So they received about 92% of what I would call hub pricing. And let's see how that carried forward through the years. About 92% in 2019, 
in 2018 and about 95 in 2019. So what might have happened? They may have shifted their production uh, from the Bakken toward the scoop stack where location is a little bit more favorable and perhaps the quality of the oil might be a little bit more favorable in the areas they were producing in 2019 as well. So think about that. Hit pause and think about that for a minute. What this number represents. It's what they received divided by what they would have received if they had received the prices announced on the news each night that year. Now instead of forecasting their production, I'm sorry, instead of forecasting their revenue, it makes a lot more sense for them to think, well, how many wells are we going to drill and how do we forecast that production? So let's say there that we wanted to go back to our ratio approach. And so if we knew how oil had changed, over a couple of years and gas as well, and we wanted to assume that it was going to grow at the same rate, then we could come in here and forecast oil. And that formula actually copies down. And I'm just going to say equals zero for that one. So we can control R on these. Now we need to forecast some kind of price as well. Don't we wish we had $57 oil in 2020? Uh, but let's say we end up with an average of 30 for the year, and then it comes back slowly. Some people may say even that is optimistic. Then this formula should copy straight across with a control R. Now what about the percent of hub realized? Remember this is something we calculated based on historical revenue versus theoretical or what have you. So here we want to make some estimate of how is that going to change. I talked a little bit about why location and quality would affect that number and so you may choose to use something different than 95 for that reason. Uh, but I'm going to choose to use 95. <clears throat> so really, if you think about row 16, kind of belongs better down here. We're looking at an historical ratio and a forecast driver, but it just fits so much better up here that I'm going to leave it up here. Then when I go to calculate revenue, I know you want to hit that cell, but don't. Just take what you thought you should get times percent of hub pricing, copy, paste, and now we could get a dashboard to control our production rates and our prices. And we would effectively forecast our revenue. And that was the meat of this video. That's about eight minutes worth. Thanks. Have a great day.